going on, Vinyl Community? Welcome to another video with The Record Spinner. In today's video, I'm going to be doing a vinyl haul showcasing all the records that I got within the month of March this year in 2021. But real quick, before we get into the haul, I want to give a huge shout out to Don Lehman, who is the father of fellow VC member Marikin Lehman Craddock. Uh, he has a business called Things by Don Inc., where he does a lot of woodworking, and he recently started doing album dividers and Marikin was able to hook us youngest members of the VC up with some dividers of the bands that we love the most. So as you can see, I got dividers made for my Kiss and Pink Floyd collections. They look absolutely awesome. Very high quality wood material was used. They have a nice smooth finish to them and the cutting job of the logos are so intricate, especially the Kiss logo where you can see the members faces inside the letters, which is just the coolest thing. I am very impressed with the job Don did on these and I am certainly going to be getting more done and if you are in the market for some I will leave his contact info down in the description box below. Now on to the haul and we have a lot of stuff to get through in this vinyl haul. We have some Black Sabbath, Runaways, Paul Stanley's Soul Station, Leonard Skinner, and much much more. It is about to go deep so without further ado sit back relax and enjoy the latest finds. All right, guys, we are going to be kicking this haul off with some Beach Boys. I have been on a big Beach Boys kick uh, these past couple of days, and I recently found myself killing some time at my local record store, The Rock Shop, while my dad was getting a medical procedure done, which everything turned out fine, which is the most important thing. And when I saw this album... it. It had occurred to me that this album had basically been at the store for a number of years and I still had yet to own a copy of it. And I figured since I was in the Beach Boy spirit, I might as well just bring it home with me and add it to the collection. And that is Carl and the Passions So Tough. This came out back in 1972. Uh, this features uh, some notable cuts such as Marcella. All this is that. You need a mess of help to stand alone. Some really cool rocking tunes on this album. Uh, Bruce Johnson had left the band at this point for a couple years, and two new members were brought in uh, Blondie Chaplin and Ricky Fatar, two uh, South African musicians that Carl was friends with. He brought them into the band, and uh, they were with the band for a good portion of the early 70s, I would say. Here's the back cover. There's all the band members there. And also, just for the sake of pointing it out, Brian Wilson was not part of this photo shoot. That is photoshopped from another band photo that he was in around like the same time frame. So they kind of superimposed him to make, make it look like he was part of the band, which he still was. He does co-write a couple of songs on this, but he doesn't really perform much. This is kind of when the bedroom period was, you know, kind of starting to come in when he basically didn't leave his bedroom for a couple of years, which is really, really sad. But anyways, I'm excited to dig into this album. Um, I have never listened to this from start to finish in one sitting. I've heard songs and on various compilations and box sets. So this is going to be a fresh listen indeed comes in a polyline sleeve and there it comes on the brother records capital label which is quite nice really really cool definitely cannot wait to give this album a spin the beach boys carl and the passions so tough all right guys so this is probably going to be the biggest clip featured in this vinyl haul i say that and it's already the beginning of the month but you, you never know. It, it might change. But real quick to keep you guys in the loop. Um, if you follow me on social media, you already are aware of this. But to those that aren't, um, I recently joined the website vinylwritermusic.com as a fellowed columnist. Uh, the world of journalism is something that I've always wanted to pursue. And it's something that I've... I'm kind of basically hinting at while I'm wrapping up my music business degree. And um, the guy that runs the website, a guy by the name of Andrew and I, we've been keeping up a uh, friendly correspondence after he interviewed me for his website. Uh, we're both KISS fans, and we're also big uh, KISS bootleg collectors. So him and I, we just get along great. And he asked me to be a part of the team, which I gladly accepted. So I've been doing a little bit of writing for the website. And uh, recently, he struck up a deal with a fellow representative of the label ORG Music, uh, where basically they would send him records to review and then write reviews for Vinyl Writer, and then those reviews also get shared on the ORG Music website, and he wanted to get me involved, and I was very, very excited to jump on this opportunity, and the record that I received from ORG Music is 
Dream Sitch, and uh, this is the debut album from these guys. Um, upon listening to the sound sa uh, samples on iTunes, I kind of got some late 60s Beach Boys-esque kind of vibes out of this, so I figured this would be a fun record to review. And um, this also comes pressed on kind of like marbled red vinyl, a little bit of green in there, which is very, very solid. And you might be wondering, what exactly do I think of this record? Well, by the time you're watching this, the review will be up, and you can uh, go on to the uh, Vinyl Writer website and check it out for yourself. I will provide a link down in the description box below. Then we have a new release uh, that just came out fairly recently. I ordered this off of Bull Moose, and it is the newest album by Alice Scooper. This is Detroit Stories. Um, Alice kind of coming back to his Detroit roots with this album. Uh, a couple of tracks had, I think, come out prior on the Breadcrumbs EP. Uh, there was also the track Hanging by a Thread, parentheses, Don't Give Up, which came out uh, last year, I believe. And um, then there's a couple of tracks on here that uh, feature the original Alice Scooper band, which is always a treat to hear. So uh, definitely very excited to dig into this album. And uh, this is the indie uh, exclusive pressing, which comes on, once I get it out of the sleeve, comes on red vinyl. I love the custom center labels there. It matches uh, the vinyl very, very well. And I believe the indie exclusive variant uh, is limited to 500, I want to say. So that's always really cool. Nice bit of artwork with some lyrics. And then I'll show you the other LP as well. So there you go. Very, very nice. And uh, definitely excited to uh, give this one a spin for sure. And then we get to a big, massive haul from Sky Valley Records. And uh, these next two uh, releases just came out fairly recently as well. Um, I have been wanting vinyl copies of these albums for a long time. I Actually, to be fair, I did have a vinyl copy of one of them. And then when I heard that uh, these albums were getting deluxe vinyl reissue treatments, um, I brought in the copy that I previously had uh, to Sky Valley for trade because I figured I could get the deluxe version, which comes with all the extras and such. But the other album, I did not have on vinyl, and I've been wanting a copy of it. And uh, I'm telling you, 2021 is the year of the Sabbath because aside from the Super Deluxe Volume 4 box set, we got deluxe reissues of the first couple of Dio albums. So starting off with Heaven and Hell, this was Dio's first album with them. This is also one of the earliest Black Sabbath albums that I ever listened to. Neon Nights, Children of the Sea, Lady Evil, the title track, Die Young, Lonely is the Word, phenomenal phenomenal sabbath record and then in terms of the bonus cuts uh we have some live b-sides uh some mono seven inch versions and a couple of live tracks from hartford connecticut which is rather cool back cover there this comes in a gatefold sleeve with uh liner notes and various single sleeves and album sleeves from different countries which is always cool to see they often appear in the black sabbath reissues show you guys the new updated label because originally this came out on a uh, warner brothers but warner brothers no longer exists now it's warner records so they kind of took that old label kind of gave it the modern twist with the warner records uh, logo there and then just real quick to show you the label to the bonus cuts it just lists the track lists right there nice heavyweight black vinyl and if you're wondering, this was the Black Sabbath album that I did not own on vinyl, but I did own a Rhino pressing of Mob Rules, which I bought used from a Discog seller some time ago. And it was in rather decent condition, but I figured I can get a nice upgrade because there was a couple of scuffs on the vinyl, but also to get the bonus cuts. Uh, on this one, you get uh, Turn Up the Night, uh, Sign of the Southern Cross, The Mob Rules, which is phenomenal. Um, slipping away, falling off the edge of the world. Mob Rules is fantastic. Um, in terms of the bonus cuts, uh, we have the heavy metal soundtrack version of Mob Rules, uh, live B-side of Die Young, a new 2021 mix of Mob Rules, um, some live cuts uh, from the Hammersmith Odeon, and then a um, live cut of Sign of the Southern Cross and Heaven and Hell reprise from Portland. So 
nice variety of bonus cuts there. Uh, the back side does feature this really cool graphic, along with some posters and um, different covers. Gatefold, this right here is the original back cover. Then we have the liner notes there. And then the, um, the center labels are basically the same as Heaven and Hell, so I'm not going to pull those out, but you kind of get the general gist of it. So... Very happy to see these get reissued, and uh, I wonder what the rest of this year will bring. I'm telling you, Sabbath is on a roll with these products. Good stuff. And then we have this record. Now, everyone's been kind of talking about this album, and uh, he had uploaded on the Facebook page by he, Chuck, the owner of Sky Valley, said that he had a couple copies in, and I snagged the last one. And when I picked it up at the store, uh, he said, dude, I don't know how the hell you snagged this, because apparently he has like a wait list of like 30 people waiting to get, uh, get, uh, get their hands on a copy. It is the newest album by <coughs> Weezer okay human um weezer goes orchestral this is their kind of baroque pop pet sounds kind of album and i really like weezer's you know style their first couple of albums are brilliant i wouldn't go as far as to say that i am a diehard uh weezer fan but considering the approach that they took with this record um i figured i would give it a chance because lately weezer albums have been kind of hit or miss based off of the singles i've heard and other tracks i've listened to uh it seems like they're onto something now so I decided to get my hands on it, but you're wondering what's the big appeal with getting my hands on this. It is because I got the indie exclusive pressing and you can hardly find this now. Uh, this is pressed on clear vinyl with colorful splatter. So here we basically have some uh, bits of red, blue, kind of like a yellowish greenish kind of color absolutely awesome very nice kind of drawn out center labels so this is really really cool and just for the sake of showing nice photo of the band lyrics and some artwork on this side so uh yeah managed to get the last copy that he had and i've been to a couple other record stores and i have not seen this anywhere so very happy to get my hands on it so those three records from sky valley are ones that i paid in advance for and such uh then i did a couple of trades at the store and of course i always take store credit because if you're bringing in stuff that you already bought you obviously want to make room for other stuff depending on the situation and i left with some really awesome things now the first one is actually a relatively new reissue that i came close to ordering but i figured you know what let me wait until i do the trade unless i'm put on the hot seat and i should snag it sooner this is Judas Priest Rockarola. Um, this is their first album. Um, I was very pleased with um, their second album, Sad Wings of Destiny, from um, this past record store day that I figured that I would give the first one a shot. Now, this is a different album cover. The original one has like the bottle cap design on it, whereas this kind of has like that sort of, I don't know how you can describe it, kind of like, um, I don't know, like an... Um, warfare alien kind of thing it's kind of interesting um some people might be bugged by the limited edition colored vinyl border on here but i mean it describes what it is uh which is really cool track list there and this is also the first time that it's been made into a gatefold kind of looks similar to the uh, sad wings of destiny one picture of rob halford there with long hair which is kind of a rarity to see and uh, wait until you see the color of the vinyl on this. This looks absolutely gorgeous. And also, I'm a schmuck for colored vinyl, so this was kind of like a, a successful marketing gimmick that made me kind of cave in. But also, I want to check out the album as well because I need to build my Priest collection. Check that out. So this is like grape colored vinyl with white as well as black splatter, which looks absolutely gorgeous it kind of has like a nice kind of eclipse look on this side and then the white kind of blends almost as like a like a blob almost on this side so it's like a pretty cool you know you get two different rather unique looks on both sides which is really really cool so very happy that i left with this and then we'll move on to the next thing. And I was literally um, just kind of going through some boxes that were on the ground. And I saw this. And I hadn't seen this before at the record store. And I figured this would sit nicely next to my copy of Queens of Noise. That's right. I am talking about The Runaways. And of course, this one features Cherry Bomb. Uh, you Drive Me Wild. Rock and Roll is on here. Dead End Justice. 
I'm still building my Runaways collection, so you got to get all the uh, all the old ones. So here's the back. This comes in a nice gatefold sleeve. And then inside we have nice insert with photos and lyrics. You can tell where this was pressed by this sleeve. This is an RTI pressing, uh, mastered by Kevin Gray. So this is an all analog pressing. This was put out by the label Modern Harmonic, uh, which also did the Queens of Noise uh, reissue that I got, I believe, last month. So very awesome to uh, get my hands on the first one, and now I gotta now I gotta get the rest of them. And the last record I'll show in this clip is actually a band that. I don't have any records of, and I've been seeing this record for a long time, and I've been intrigued with it. I I I know of the band. Um, I don't have. I've never really owned any of their works before, but they have a nice style. I've heard a couple songs here and there. I just figured I would give it a shot. Just you know, the cover is attractive, and I've liked what I've heard musically. The Donnas. This is called Gold Medal. Um, two thousands all female kind of pop punk bands. Uh, really dig their style, and the past couple times this record has been at the store, and I'm like, I wonder what that's like, and I just figured, you know what, store credit, might as well, you know, give it a shot. Now, this pressing is limited to 750 copies. Apparently, this is selling for, like, over 100 on eBay, which is ridiculous. This comes with a nice poster, kind of like a poster, it's more like an insert, and printed inner sleeve, Photo collage of the gals, credits and lyrics, and this comes pressed on kind of like black vinyl with some goldish kind of splatter. It kind of looks more like a like a meteor shower, if anything. It, it it has a really cool desired effect. Like it looks more white in some places, but if you look at it at a certain light, you can definitely see the gold resemblance. It's kind of like a pale gold almost. So, very solid looking pressing, and uh, definitely excited to give this one a listen, because I know that at the store they have another one of their albums. I think it's Spend the Night, I think that's what it's called. I'll have to double check, but uh, yeah, definitely excited to dig into some Donnas with gold metal. Alright, so here is a record that I ordered right around the same time as I got the Beach Boys Carl and the Passions album that I showed earlier. I was on a big Beach Boys kick, just trying to scour the market, see what was out there. And I stumbled across this record from a Discog seller all around VG Plus for $15, which is an absolutely outstanding price considering it is an Analog Productions pressing. And yes, I mentioned Beach Boys and I mentioned Analog Productions. You know exactly what to expect, but you can only speculate which album it is. We are going back to the very, very beginning with Surf and Safari. This is their first full-length album. Of course, this features the title track, Surf and Safari, and 409. There's also the band's first ever single, which is called Surfin, which was originally released on the Candix label before they, uh, before they got signed to um, Capitol. And then they also do a cover of uh, Summertime Blues, which is good fun. Um, it's early you know, surf era Beach Boys doing what they did best. So it's it's very, very formative, but definitely a good basis to kind of build on. And like all these um, analog productions pressings, they come in these nice glossy tip-on style jackets. And this is the mono version, of course, mastered from the uh, master tape, which is always good. I mean, these Beach Boys analog productions pressings are phenomenal. I've said it many times on this channel. Uh, nice insert here, kind of talks about the pressings a bit. And if you look in the middle there, that is indeed a scan of the original Surf and Safari tape box. So that does indicate that the tapes were used and there's all the other titles that they've done. And of course, Analog Productions likes to include these little inserts here to remind you of other products that you can spend your hard-earned dollars on, whether it's vinyl, Super Audio CD, um, master tapes and such. I mean, this company knows what's up. Um, of course, let's get to the vinyl. Nice rice paper sleeve, quality record pressings logo. I wonder where it was pressed. And of course, nice 200 gram vinyl. 
nice rainbow capital label um overall the vinyl has like a few minor scuffs on it and it needs a quick brush over with the anti-static brush but honestly this is going to play back beautifully and uh definitely excited to uh give this early beach boys album a spin with surf and safari Okay, so this is an entirely different face that you have not seen on the channel, and I've mentioned this wonderful individual many, many times in videos. This is my best friend, Chelsea. Hi. Uh, if you remember <laughs> from my December haul, I filmed her unwrapping her Christmas gift, which was a turntable and her first record. And I'm glad to say that I didn't buy you that turntable thinking that it was going to be a gamble, because now she has been fully engrossed in vinyl collecting and... We did some record shopping today at our local record store, The Rock Shop in Mays Landing. And I'll show you guys first what I got, and then Chelsea's going to show you what she got. So first, this was the main thing that I was after. I had a pre-order on this, and I canceled it, and now copies are becoming hard to come by. It's a new album that just came out, and it, you can get it on, on Standard Black, but I wanted the indie variant. And it is the newest album by Julian Baker, Little, Obliv uh, uh, Little Oblivion's. And as you can see there, this is on limited edition yellow vinyl. This is what the indie record store has got. So I'm very glad that I got this. And next up, this has been at the store for the longest time. And it's full circle in a sense, because some time ago, I remember I did a record store vlog with uh, my girlfriend, Sam, the CD player. And I picked up a copy of Paul McCartney's Ram. And now years later... I have Thrillington. So this was uh, kind of a side project that Paul McCartney did under the alias Percy Thrills Thrillington. And it's basically just a orchestral version of Ram. And I've been really digging that album lately. I've kind of revisited bits and pieces of it. And so I'm very happy that I got my hands on the orchestral version. And then I took a look at their 10 inch collection. Now I don't buy 10 inches often, but um, for some reason I asked the, um, the store worker, I was like, did you get this in recently? Because I don't recall seeing this. And he said, yeah, it's been here forever. They must have repriced it and put it up at the front because I had not seen this before. This is from a couple record store days past. Record store day Black Friday, I think. But uh, this is a David Bowie tenant. I don't know if you can see that. It features the two tracks, Sue are in a season of crime and Tis a Pity, She Was a Whore. Uh, these two tracks came <laughs> off... <laughs> came off of his last album black star but these are early versions because one song appeared on the compilation nothing has changed and then they got re-recorded and everything <laughs> this is her first time on camera <laughs> be forgiving <laughs> now this last record that i'm going to show is also the first record that she is going to show and we're going to show this simultaneously okay. Carol King Tapestry. Um, I have been wanting to get into this album for a long time, and there were two copies there. These are brand new copies. This one is on gold vinyl, Walmart exclusive. And I made a deal. I was like, if you're going to get it, then I'm going to get it. So we both left with the same album, and uh, It's Too Late, of course, is the one that I know off the bat. But to be honest, I need to dig into the rest of it. So this will be a fresh listen. But I've done enough chit-chatting. Chelsea, what did you get? So, um, just like you just saw, um, I got Carol King's Tapestry, um, whereas Dylan, the record spinner, knows all the details Not about everything. <laughs> bands and in the history. Um, I like to select my records actually for more sentimental reasons. Um, so growing up, I would always hear my parents' mixtapes on their cassettes of all their different songs that they liked. And my mom had It's Too Late on her cassette tape. Nice. Um, but honestly, I like to listen to Carole King when I want to cry my eyes out. <laughs> um, it's a great soundtrack for breakups Aww. and just, you know, any kind of mood that you're going through, uh, in particular, so far away. Um, everyone knows her, though, from Natural Woman. I feel the earth move. Um, and like you said, It's Too Late, which is a favorite of mine. Um, and Where You Lead is actually, fun fact, the theme song to Gilmore Girls. The really? Yeah, and I love Gilmore Girls, so that's why I got it. I never knew that. Um, I'm getting schooled by this one. <laughs> <laughs> Not really, but a little bit. Um, the second record I picked up was James Taylor's Greatest Hits. Classic. That can be seen. There you well, go. Sorry yeah. for the glare, guys. <laughs> um, 
Growing up, I have the fondest memories of listening to James Taylor with my dad in his car growing up. Um, Mexico is one of my favorites. Um, Fire and Rain, uh, Copper Line, Carolina My Mind. I mean, you and I love Fire and Rain. Yes. It's a staple for our road trip playlist, for sure. It's It, it comes up frequently. <laughs> um, but to be honest, even though I have tons of CDs and a lot of things on Apple Music... Um, I don't think you realize why I pick certain records, actually, is because I actually pick it on the mood that I want to be in when I listen. So, that's, like, that's true. That's valid. I, I will literally play records while I'm cleaning the house. So, I just want to be in this really easygoing, relaxed it's, it's, mood. It's, it's house, aesthetic. It's house cleaning music. Yeah, <laughs> pretty much. So, I just, I always want to feel happy. So, that's why I'm very selective about my records and... Um, the third record I picked up was Taylor Swift's debut album. Um, I wasn't really a Taylor Swift fan when she first came out. I never really got into it where everyone else was on the bandwagon. Um, but recently when she came out with Folklore, I absolutely just fell in love. I bought I, a copy. I got you to get a copy. <laughs> and his little guilty pleasure is listening to it in the car with me. So uh... not all this rock and roll. <laughs> but, um... I feel like sometimes you just get into artists and the album they come up come out with when you're in a certain place in your life where it just resonates yeah, with you. Absolutely. And I feel like that's just where I am. Um, of course her debut album has Teardrops on My Guitar and our songs, so the staple songs that she came out with, but I just wanna have every Taylor Swift record. <laughs> You're to blame for that. Uh, not my fault. You're the one that said I must have it all. <laughs> <laughs> and then the final um, record I picked up was Gloria Stefan, Born, oh, sorry, Cuts Both Ways. Um, my mom actually played the song called One, Two, Three by Gloria Stefan. It's like a really upbeat okay. party feel um but in particular um on here she has a song called get on your feet and it's just like i said really feel good very um party-esque um and i just love gloria stefan <laughs> i want to put you on to like the music that you wouldn't normally ever hear or go for look my collection already is it's quite eclectic in places yeah. it is but um yeah this is my first time seeing your collection in here it's been years since i've been in your room and this is just insane like online it looks like this is like 10 times bigger <laughs> and like i just pray we don't have an earthquake because you'll be dead <laughs> yeah happen. yeah it's not gonna be pleasant <laughs> <laughs> but i'm excited and this is just the beginning and i have you to blame because i'm really excited to build my record collection so it'll be fun yes yes Okay, so aside from the records that Chelsea and I bought, we also stopped at the Books A Million that was closest to the record store to see what kind of records they had there. And I saw this from the corner of my eye, and they must have gotten this in fairly recently. And apparently, Books A Million sells bootlegs now. Now, this is not a true bootleg in all its glory. This is one of those legal bootlegs of like radio broadcasts that are legal to be released. It's it's one of those gray market areas. But this is ACDC live at the Agora Ballroom in Cleveland, August 22nd, 1977. Radio broadcast recording, which sounds absolutely fantastic. The set list includes Live Wire, She's Got Balls, Problem Child, High Voltage, The Jack, Baby Please Don't Go, and Rocker. Basic, you know, kind of early ACDC live standards. Um... In terms of the packaging, it's interesting because, of course, right there, you have a back in black era photo of the band featuring Brian Johnson. And then you have this kind of graphic here, which I've seen kind of plastered all over the place, where you have Bond on the one side, Brian Johnson on the other. And then the band photo features uh, Simon Wright when he was in the band. So it's, it's a mishmash, but it's all about the musical content, and that's why I bought this release. And uh, this is put out by the DOL label. I think I have a Rush release that they did that I bought at the at the rock shop a couple years ago. But uh, this actually comes pressed on sort of blood orange vinyl, which looks very nice. Cool to see that they did a colored variant of it. So, uh, so yeah, quite cool to see a release like this at Books A Million. And then upon coming home, a uh, package came in the mail. And um, lately, I have been on a Ramones kick. And when I saw this, I was quite intrigued because 
original pressings of this particular album go for a literal arm and a leg. I'm telling you, you're, you're going to be paying out the ass for it. And then they've reissued it, uh, I want to say, in around the 2010s, maybe, somewhere around there. And those are hard to come by, too. Like, they're not pressing these up. But recently... I found some unofficial pressings. Yes, they're unofficial. I know they're bootlegs, whatever you want to call them. But look, until they do an official pressing of it, it'll be a placeholder and I have it for the collection. Ramon's Mondo Bizarro. Now, this came out back in 1992. Uh, this was CJ Ramon's first album with the band uh, during his brief tenure around 89 to 96. He was in the band for a good while. They did a couple of rather decent studio albums. I know um, this one doesn't get a whole lot of love. Uh, there are some strong tracks on here, though. Um, Poison Heart is awesome. That uh, that was written by Didi Ramon, who was still writing for them. Uh, Strength to Endure, Main Man, Center, uh, Center Shit is really good. It's kind of like um, a commentary on the PMRC stuff with, you know, Tipper Gore and whatnot. Uh, they, they do a cover of The Doors, Take It As It Comes. Um, and there's even a track on here called Touring, which actually dates back to the Pleasant Dream Sessions from 1981. So they kind of revived that track. And this unofficial pressing was put out by a label called Vacant Records. They did this album, and they also did Adios Amigos, which I have yet to see a copy around. I got this from a Discog seller, but who knows? Maybe they'll pop up. This does come, though, with a nice, sturdy insert with the lyrics on this side cool band photograph there there's cj and the vinyl itself standard black vinyl decently pressed i would say comes on this rather yellowish vacant label which kind of reminds me of the radioactive label that the ramones were signed to at the time when this came out so cool to get my hands on this and like i said it'll certainly be a placeholder until they do an official pressing of it or even if they will you never really know but nonetheless, I am happy to have it in the collection. Ramones, Mondo Bizarro. All right, so here is a record that I picked up on Amazon with my Discover Cashback bonus points. Um, I do have their second album in my collection, but I have yet to dig into the first. And I figured this would be a prime time to do so since it was available. I am talking about the debut album by The Stooges. Um Definitely one of the most quintessential late 60s Detroit garage rock albums ever with tracks such as uh, 1969, Wanna Be Your Dog, No Fun, Real Cool Time. I'm honestly really psyched to dig deeper into this band and with this album. Uh, this particular pressing comes pressed on the red Electra label, which is really nice, so... Definitely excited to finally have this in the vinyl collection so I can experience it in its entirety for myself. And now we get to the really cool release that I'm excited to show you guys. And this was announced kind of recently, I would say several weeks ago upon filming this clip. And apparently from what I've heard, this release is limited to like a couple thousand copies and... Um, and they basically sold out on the website. So I kind of jumped on it as an impulse kind of buy just immediately when it was announced. And I do already own this release um, on standard black vinyl and all. But it's my favorite band of all time. It is the 45th anniversary pressing of the Kiss Shout It Out Loud single. Now, I own this single already as part of the Casablanca singles box set. Uh, but luckily, there's enough going in this release for me to get a second copy because this right here is the Danish artwork for the single as it came out back in the day. So it's cool to have um, alternate artwork. And for the sake of keeping it all exclusive, this comes pressed on marbled orange vinyl which looks really nice with the blue bogart label and i also should note that uh the version of shout it out loud that is featured on on the single is a unique single version which i believe it's like an um a slightly edited version and an alternate mix something among those lines so it's very unique to have and um lately kiss does a lot of these anniversary pressings mainly for their albums where they're doing on colored vinyl and such and i always kind of miss the boat on those because my rule is i won't buy colored variants of albums that i already own on standard uh black vinyl but luckily in the case of having 
different artwork, colored vinyl, it's enough for me to gravitate towards it and get my hands on a really cool piece of KISS 7-inch vinyl. All right, so my friend Chelsea and I took another trip over to Sky Valley Records, mainly so I can pick up a couple of records that Chuck was holding for me, but I also figured that we would do some shopping as well because, well, we like to spend our money wisely. Um, the last uh, trade-in that I did over at Sky Valley Records, I had some leftover credit that I did not use on that visit, so I figured I would just go through his uh, Facebook uh, group and where he, you know, puts all his listings up, find some stuff that I want from there, and basically that would be it. So that's exactly what I did. And the records that I managed to get with my leftover trading credit, along with a small balance that I paid out of pocket for because I needed to have everything, as you'll see, are these two recently released Leonard Skinner live albums. These were both... Uh, recorded at the Florida Theater in Jacksonville, Florida, which is their hometown. And they did their first two albums, pronounced Leonard Skinner and Second Helping, uh, from start to finish in their entirety. And because they released two of them, I need to have both because I am a completist. So starting off with the first one here on this one, we have um, Tuesday's Gone, uh, Give Me Three Steps, Simple Man, Freebird. I have the original studio version already in my collection. This is such a solid album from Skinnerd. Uh, this comes in a nice printed inner sleeve with photos and liner notes, which is quite nice. But the vinyl, it was kind of the main selling point for me because I was on a bit of a Skinnerd kick lately and I wanted to get some more Skinnerd vinyl in my collection. And uh, this was kind of a blessing because check this out. This comes pressed on white vinyl with red and blue splatter, which is really, really awesome. A nice, gorgeous piece of vinyl right here. So that is for pronounced Leonard Skinnerd. And then we get to... Second Helping, and here we have uh, Sweet Home Alabama, everyone knows that one, and uh, Working for MCA. I need to get the uh, studio version for my collection. This is the only version that I have of the second album, so definitely need to fill some holes for sure. Same deal, printed inner sleeve, photos, credits, liner notes, but the vinyl on this is just as cool as the last one. This right here comes pressed on blue vinyl with red and white splatter so they kind of alternate the colors a little bit i wonder if they'll do a third live album and they'll change up the colors even more i'll buy it up but now that's a really awesome piece of splatter vinyl there and i'm very happy to have gotten my hands on these two uh leonard skittered live albums that came out fairly recently and then I have also been on a really big Runaways kick. And it's funny because the last couple of times I've been to Sky Valley, I've picked up uh, Runaways albums. So I just, I've just i just been kind of seeking out anything. And I remember I had seen this at the store multiple times in some of the more recent times that I've been there. So I took a, a look to see if it was still available and he still had some copies available. And I asked if he could set me aside a copy and have it be the lowest number possible. You're probably wondering what exactly I'm talking about. It is this right here. This is called Wasted, live at the Palladium, New York City, on January 7th, 1978. This is a radio broadcast. It's one of those legal bootleg-type releases. Um, out of 500 copies, this right here is copy number 44, which is quite nice. It's nice to get that nice low number just for collectability purposes. But on this, we have Wasted, Blackmail, Queens of Noise, their cover of Wild Thing, You Drive Me Wild, uh, School Days, which is one of my favorite run uh, Runaways tunes. So very happy to get my hands on some more Runaways. And in this case, live Runaways, This because I don't have any live Runaways in my collection. And this comes pressed on sort of palish pink vinyl with a nice custom black label there with white text which looks quite sharp. So very happy to uh, get my hands on some live runaways and uh, build my collection of theirs. So that is what Chuck was holding for me. And then upon looking at some of the new boxes that he got in recently, I stumbled across this record and I kind of bought it on a whim, mainly because my friend Chelsea was there and she is responsible for turning me on to this particular individual's music. And um, if you remember the clip that she was featured in in this hall, she got herself a copy of this record. And now I can say I have a copy for my myself. And that is James Taylor, Greatest Hits, one of the greatest American singer-songwriters 
on this. Uh, we have Carolina in my mind, Fire and Rain, one of my personal favorites. Uh, you've got a friend, Mexico, which is a great tune, uh, something in the way she moves. Uh, just a solid compilation overall. Gatefold sleeve, which has all the uh, credits right there. Printed inner sleeve, which has the man himself. Comes pressed on nice heavyweight 180 gram vinyl with that Warner Records label right there. So uh, very happy to add some uh, James Taylor in my collection, but now I need to start seeking out actual albums. Uh, the greatest hits will definitely do in the meantime as I warm up uh, towards his uh, catalog. So that is what I got over at Sky Valley Records. And then we checked out another uh, local record store, which was about eight minutes away called Tunes. And um, I had been wanting to go there for the longest time, but they have like some odd operating hours. It was just a matter of going on the right day at the right time. And upon looking at their selection, I stumbled across a couple of things that I really wanted to dig into. Some kind of not new territory, but just records I've been wanting to warm up to. Uh, first up, we have Lou Reed, Transformer. Um, this is the first Lou Reed studio album that I have in my collection now because the only other record of his that I have is the live album Rock and Roll Animal and on this we have a uh, Vicious uh, Walk on the Wild Side uh, produced by David Bowie and Mick Ronson so just that alone is worth checking this out but I really want to dig deeper into some more Lou Reed there's the back and then of course there's that classic orange RCA label there so definitely excited to uh, give this album a listen and then we completely shift into some modern stuff. And uh, this is a rather new band that I've been wanting to check out for a while. And I actually had an opportunity to purchase the 10 Bands One Cause pressing of this particular album. It came pressed on pink vinyl for uh, breast cancer awareness, but I slept on it and it disappeared at the Books A Million that I was gonna buy it from. But when I saw it there at, uh, at Tunes, I figured, you know what? This is a calling card, I should snag this now. And it is the first full-length album by a band called Soccer Mommy. Um, I would say it's described as like indie dream pop in some places. Oh, and I should mention the album is called Clean as well. So it's not like a self-titled debut or anything like that. But um, I remember the, uh, the notable single on this album is a track called Cool, which got a lot of heavy rotation on the kind of indie satellite radio stations. And I listened to it a lot when it was new, and I really liked the track. So I figured I would give the album a full listen. So it does come with an insert here with lyrics, a nice photograph there, and then nice custom labels on the vinyl as well, which is quite cool. So uh, definitely excited to dig into a completely different band that I don't have any records of in my collection. Because I think aside from this, they may have a couple of EPs and as well as another album that was released within the last year or so. So definitely excited to uh, check out Soccer Mommy and their first full length album, Clean. All right, so here's a record that I picked up with some Amazon cashback bonus points that I had. Um, this record actually came out fairly recently, and I had a pre-order for it, which I ended up canceling simply because some other stuff got in the way. And I figured this would still be available in the foreseeable future months down the road. And I've just been kind of waiting to get my hands on these when I was able to. And I have one more release to track down. And then my collection, my studio collection, I should say, of this particular band is complete. But what exactly am I talking about? It is Credence Clearwater Revival Pendulum. Uh, this was the last album to feature the classic lineup. This was um, Tom Fogarty's last album with the band. Uh, the two notable tracks on here are, um, of course, Have You Ever Seen the Rain and Hey Tonight. Um, and this was put out by Kraft Recordings. They have been doing... Uh, half speed master cuts of the Credence catalog. They did a big box set and they're basically releasing the title separately. And they did this one as well as Mardi Gras, which I still have yet to get. So I figured this was the, uh, the next gap that I had to fill. So I was very happy to get my hands on it. And like all of the Credence reissues on craft recordings, nice tip on style jackets, very glossy sleeves, replicates the gatefold very nicely. The uh, record itself comes in a nice polyline sleeve, which is always a nice touch. And of course, 
blue fantasy label right there just absolute classic stuff and i do have to say aside from the two tracks that i just mentioned that are on this album i'm not quite too familiar with the rest of them so this will definitely be a fresh listen indeed and uh, definitely excited to be giving this a spin on the turntable credence clear water revivals pendulum all right, so here is a record that I purchased off of my good friend, Marikin Lehman Craddock. Uh, she was going through her collection and kind of just finding some bits and pieces that she was looking to part ways with. And she gave us youngest members of the VC a bit of a sneak peek as to what she was going to be selling and trying to get rid of. And we all made various offers for what we wanted for ourselves. And I saw this and I thought that this would be an interesting release to own. So thank you very much, Marikin. Uh, it is... The Monkeys, Good Times Plus. Now, this came out as part of Record Store Day Black Friday in 2016. And it's basically a 10-inch four-song EP, which brings together all of the B-sides taken from the singles uh, from their album Good Times. And oddly enough, now that I own this, I don't own a copy of Good Times. And that has to change because this is very much a sort of companion piece to sit alongside the album. And now I need to get it for myself. It's weird because I remember FYE did an exclusive pressing of it and I never purchased it. So kind of odd. So now I need to track that down. Very nice artwork featured on the front and the back. And this record comes pressed on translucent. It's described to be red vinyl, but it's kind of has like a bit of a salmon kind of tone to it. Very nice uh, custom center labels to complement the color of the vinyl. So thank you very much, Marikin, for this. Uh, definitely looking forward to be uh, spinning this on the turntable. The Monkees, Good Times Plus. All right, so here is a record that I picked up at the FYE that I work at. We got this in several months ago, and I've been meaning to get my hands on it. And I got this uh, using the funds that I got from the patrons over at Patreon. So thank you very much uh, to those out there that support me on that platform. It is... Motorhead Ace of Spades. I have been slowly but surely uh, been building my Motorhead collection and I knew right off the bat that this album was a must own. This of course features the title track Ace of Spades which basically everyone knows. Uh, Love Me Like a Reptile, Jailbait, Bite the Bullet, all kinds of Motorhead classics. Uh, this right here is the new 40th anniversary uh, pressing. Uh, they did a new half speed master of it which I'm definitely very excited to be uh, listening to for the first time ever. There is one of the labels, and then the other side features a nice 40th anniversary graphic there. So definitely happy to have this finally in a collection and to be listening to it for the first time ever. And then tonight, I found myself with my girlfriend Sam and my friend Chelsea. We were doing a little bit of late night Walmart shopping. And yes, this is a vinyl haul video. And yes, I know I mentioned Walmart. That makes me out to be the bad guy because I'm buying records at Walmart. But hey, for $15, I got a collection standard. I think this is one of those albums that I guess you must own in a record collection. And for the longest time, I never had it, nor have I ever listened to it. See, I'm taking risks. But anyways, Frampton Comes Alive. Yes, this is the notable live album uh, that Peter Frampton had released back in 76. Of course, on here, Show Me The Way appears on this. Baby, I Love Your Way does a cover of the Stones' Jumpin' Jack Flash. Do you feel like we do? Um, I'm honestly really, really excited to be giving this album a listen for the first time. I'm telling you, there's a lot of firsts between the Motorhead and this. Uh, comes with a nice gatefold sleeve. Photos of Peter and his band with some liner notes. And of course, the records do come in nice polyline sleeves. Comes on that classic A&M label. Nice heavyweight vinyl. Can't go wrong whatsoever with it. So definitely very happy to have gotten my hands on this for a very good price. And uh, definitely excited to be experiencing this one as well for the first time. Frampton Comes Alive. All right, guys, here is a brand new release that just came out fairly recently this past Friday. I'm filming this clip on a Monday. Uh, just came in the mail. I am so excited to dig into this album. It is the side project of the frontman of my favorite band. If you're a longtime viewer of this channel, you know exactly who I'm talking about. But to those that don't, 
talking about the front man of the band Kiss. It is Paul Stanley's Soul Station, Now and Then. Now, Soul Station is Paul Stanley's side project where him, along with his backup band, uh, they do covers of, you know, Motown, you know, material, R&B covers, soul stuff, and he even does some originals of his own on this album. Now, if you're a Kiss fan and you're expecting, you know, what you come to expect with Kiss and what Paul does with them, um, it's definitely something left field for sure. So if you're into R&B and all that, you know, kind of thing, then you will definitely enjoy this. But if you're expecting, you know, Love Gun and I Was Made For Loving You, you're not going to quite get that. And needless to say, look, I am not the biggest listener of Motown, R&B and whatnot, but hey, it's Paul Stanley. Of course, I'm going to give it a chance. And knowing him, he's going to do it right because he's often referenced, you know, a lot of the artists of that time, you know, as his main influences. And of course, yes, he was into, you know, Zeppelin and Yardbirds and whatnot. But the like this right here is his true root. So I'm definitely excited to be giving this album a listen. Very nice gatefold sleeve. Very glossy, too, I should say. There's Paul there. Some liner notes from him. And we have individ individual portraits of his band members. And yes, that is Eric Singer right there. He plays drums in this band. Uh, we have an insert as well. Features some live shots as well as the track list and credits. There's Paul right there. Now, I ordered this off of youdiscovermusic.com. They were the sole uh, distributor of the limited edition colored vinyl version, which of course, you know, that's the version I'm going to go after. And as you can see, this comes pressed on kind of light purple vinyl, which is very nice. Nice custom labels there. And then just for the sake of showing, I'll show the other one off as well. So we'll put this one back. And here is the second one. So... Very, very nice. Definitely excited to be giving uh, this album a listen and digging into some Motown R&B and soul with Paul Stanley's Soul Station now and then. All right, so here is a record that I purchased off of a Discog seller, and I've had my eyes on this record for a while now since I've been getting more into this band, like I mentioned earlier in this haul. Um, and it just so happened, I'm telling you, it was a real stroke of luck. I went on Discogs one morning and I went to the listing and a seller had just uploaded a copy of it. Um, obviously not in the shrink wrap, but it only been played like once or twice, but for a very good price than what it goes for sealed. So I was very happy to get my hands on it. And it is The Runaways, live in Japan. This came out back in 1977. These girls were huge in Japan and they... Uh, commemorated their uh, visit with a live album and on this album we have tracks such as queens of noise california paradise uh, their cover of wild thing uh, lou reed's rock and roll which is a staple from the first album you drive me wild of course cherry bomb american nights just a phenomenal track list and of course for the sake of showing the cover folds out like that, and you have a nice photo of the girls there. Now, this is a Record Store Day Black Friday pressing from 2019, and it comes in a Japanese-esque obi strip, which wraps around the cover just like that, and it lists all the details about the release, track list and credits on the back. The album itself opens up. Nice gatefold sleeve with some live shots of the band. Very nice. Uh, the record does come in a sort of generic Mercury record sleeve, which I'm sure is exactly how it was packaged back in the day when it came out. And of course, pressed on standard black vinyl with the blue Mercury label there. Just have to give the record a quick brush over. There's a little bit of a build up on the surface, but nonetheless, uh, very excited to be still building my Runaways collection and definitely excited to be giving this live album of theirs a spin. The Runaways, live in Japan. So there you guys go. That is my vinyl haul of all the records that I acquired within the month of March this year in 2021. If you enjoyed this video, please go ahead, give this video a like, subscribe to the channel. And if you want to support this channel, be sure to check me out on Patreon. See you guys in the next video. And most importantly, keep the record spinning.